And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hello folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game called Foothills. Now, at the top of this, it says a Snowdonia experience. This is, from what I could tell, very similar to the game Snowdonia, but this is a two-player game here from Ben Bateson and Tony Bodell. I have not played Snowdonia. I would like to, actually, at some point. Uh, but So I'm giving you this from my perspective of that. But it is from Lookout Games. I tend to really enjoy their two-player games. This one has a lot of cards, a lot of things. It's about building train lines and clearing the rubble off of them, building the track, and trying to get points using a very unique action selection. It says, I know that because it says it here on the box itself. It's like, it's, it's exciting action selection. Well, what does that mean? Let me show you. There are eight different train lines in the game, and at the beginning you're going to randomly pick two to take out. So for this setup, orange and green aren't in. In fact, you can pick a random card, like this card here shows red and green. Okay, those would be the two you pull out. So then you put these lines here, they're numbered from one to eight, and so you just put them in numerical order. Some of the lines are going to have rubble placed on them. There's two tickets of each color line. Here the red and gray kind of start at the same spot. Yellow and orange, if they were both on a table, would end at the same spot. There are some cards that are essentially one card, but it's kind of split into two, so you can see how that goes together there. And then the, each of the players is going to have their own setup. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to have an A, B, C, D, E card. And on player's turn, they're going to pick one of these cards, take that action, and then flip it over. Now, the way the cards are built is that there's a really good action on one side, and there is a okay action on the other side. And then each time you do it, you flip it back over, although there are cards that will let you flip other cards so that you can flip them back to the better side. Um, so each of these is going to do something different. So let's go over a few of the actions. This one here gives you resources. There are two main resources in, in this game, and players are going to be able to pull these from the stockyard. The stockyard is here and has iron ore, the orange cubes, and stone, the gray cubes, on it. When the last cube is pulled off of here, players are going to refill it. They're going to pull six cubes from the bag and place them on here. The bag is full of both of those, but the bag also has some white tiles in it, and these are considered to be an event tile. So when these come out, you place it here, and then players are going to be putting out a navy tile, and this is kind of a neutral player, and this will be placed on one of the railroad things that will block. It's going to be placed on the, the top left one, but I'm just showing you for purposes here. It would be placed here, and it cancels, it moves the rubble, shuts down, people building on that tile in the future. So it's a way to kind of force the, the end of the game. If you just keep drawing resources, eventually these are going to be built up and then you won't, as a player, be able to get to them. The B card allows you to remove rubble. So here I can take four rubble from a single line. So I pick a line, so for example, I'll pick this light blue line here, and I can clear up to four rubble from it, and I start from left to right. So there we go. I take that four rubble, and I'll keep that in front of me as a resource. And if you clear the last rubble from a spot, you're going to get a victory point, as is shown down there in the bottom corner. The C card lets you spend two iron ore to place a track, or you can also change rubble into a stone. You can do that three times. When placing a track on the board, you're going to need to have cleared out the rubble, and then you'll take one of your color and place it there, again scoring a victory point as you build this track. And as the game goes by, as the rubble is cleared off of these and the track is placed on all the different spots that are on here, whether it's by one player or by both players, then at the end you're going to put this stop to show that line is completed. So there are these stops here to show that line's finished. That's a, a game ending trigger. Remembering that if these navy tiles are out in the spot, that also counts as finishing the track. The D action allows you to build a station. Each station is going to have a different cost on it. It's on the flip side of your train tiles. And the cost, you'll pay that cost in stone and iron ore. And then you will get whatever it shows in the corner, which might be a victory point. 
In this case, it's a passenger, and passengers happen to be half a victory point as you take those. If there's a spot to put your surveyor, you can also move your surveyor there and get whatever the action is. In this case, you can change rubble twice into iron ore. And then finally, the E action allows you to move your surveyor to an action space or to the pub. When you move it to an action space, that action space has to have a station at it. So there has to be a station wherever that action space is going to be. And you go there and you'll take whatever the action lets you do. So for example here, you can change resources into victory points. If you go to the beginning of each line once per game, you can take a ticket for that line. So there's two tickets, one for each player, and whatever else. Like So for example here, take two rubble and a light blue ticket. Up here, take a passenger and a dark blue ticket. Take a passenger and a white ticket. And like I said, you can also send them to the pub. Going to the pub is a pretty big deal. There's a card out on the table, the pub, and when you go to the pub, you can move an action card to your scoring pile. So you're going to take one of your five action cards and you're going to move it to a scoring pile where it's going to score at the end of the game. So this one, for example, will give me a victory point for every two passengers that are on it. By the way, the, the top corner here shows you what the other side of the, the card does. Um, this one here gives me one for every scoring card that I have. This gives me one for every different colored ticket that I have. This one gives me one for every station that I have. And you can only have as many scoring cards as you have stations. That's why at the top of each board, there's a track to keep track of the stations as you build them. Now, when you put that card in the scoring pile, you then can take a new card. So there are these cards that are set aside. You'll take two of each type. So here's two E's. And you'll take one of these cards and replace it. You can pick whatever card you want. So you can take the same actions multiple times or take one action more often than others. Remembering, of course, that they're going to have different actions on the other side. And these cards can also be put into your scoring pile in the future. And so you might, for example, I might want to collect a lot of the different color tickets and then get as many of these scoring cards as I can. So maybe I'm getting two, three, or four points per each color ticket at the end of the game. The game is going to end in one of two ways. When you place all five of the buffer stops, which means five of the six lines on the table are finished, or when you need to play a, a Navi tile, but you can no longer do so. And so when that happens, the game will end. Players are going to score points for the victory points and or pass that they've gotten as the game goes by, but they're also, and the majority of your points, are going to come from scoring these different victory point cards that you've put into your victory point pile. Whoever has the most, most victory points is the winner of the game. Man, there is a lot of components in this game. It's kind of weird. I look at this and it's one of those card games that should be a board game, I guess, but since you're using only six of the eight lines, you know, you you can have this be a board game, but there certainly is pieces and components everywhere, and it's really a lot of stuff out there for a two-player game. Now, because this is a game that's historical in nature, there's going to be things that are different, and so there's a few things that have rules, like there's a ferry that has special rules, there's a special bridge tile down here, uh, on, on this one. And there's a few uh, unique rules to that, but for the most part, everything is pretty easy to understand. And while knowing what's on the backside of cards and learning how the different cards work is the main feature of the game, just realize that there's a decent amount of setup and teardown uh, to the game, but that the game components themselves I thought were fairly easy to grasp, and I think they're also very good quality. So that action selection where you have those five cards, you pick one, do the action, flip it over, is really well done. I highly enjoy that aspect of the game. I think it's a lot of fun to flip cards, to take the action, to maybe get two of the same action out there at the same time. And of course, the reverse sides of the cards have a lower selection. For example, when you use the back side of moving that surveyor piece, you can't move them to the pub. Only the one that's where it's on the front side, the gold side of the card, will do that. So that to me is the best part of this game. Trying to figure out the best ways to get points and then picking those cards and sticking them in your score pile, removing that card from the game. And you gotta be careful because you might be like, ooh, I'll remove these. Oh no, these actions no longer, I, I wanted to take this action and it's not there anymore. And there's only two of each of the extra cards available. So 
again, you got to try to think that ahead and plan it. The game kind of snowballs to a, an end. It says 30 minutes on here. I feel like the game might be slightly longer than that, but once it starts moving and once you know what everything does, you, the game's going to play out pretty quickly. You're seeing everything go, and you got to you got to keep your eye on the on the ball here. Now, I am. If I have anything negative about the game, it would be. It almost feels like, in a sense, a Martin Wallace design. He does the same thing in his games, and for some people, this is fantastic. Where because the game is so historically based, right? These are actual lines. Half of them I can't pronounce, um, but these are actual lines, and therefore. This one has a weird special rule, and this one has some kind of unique, odd thing to it. And the yellow and orange line go together. And because there's kind of these weird special rules for each one, I found that that almost, it just was like, okay, what's in this game? What does this do? What does that do? And I don't mind that they're different. I think that's good. I don't want eight symmetrical lines. I just felt that sometimes following the historical, hey, this is how this line went, to me, I think I could have cut a, a little bit of that and had even a more streamlined, easier to understand game. Be that as it may, it wasn't that big of a detractor to me, and that actually may be a positive for many people going into it. Now, there's no train movement in this game. You're just—it's more of a building game. It's collect resources, turn them in to build stations and uh, the track, and then decide what, you, what, you, what am I going to do? Try to build as much track as I can to get the points for that. Finishing up the lines, the yellow and orange line give bonus points if you finish them. Um, do I want to try to just basically trade out these victory point cards as much as possible? How fast do I want to move that surveyor around the board? And I feel like there's multiple paths to victory because there are eight lines and you're using only six of them in any particular game. It's going to play differently. Even the pool of different action cards is going to be different from game to game. And it plays like a full experience of a game. Even though it says 30 minutes, like I said, maybe 45, it feels like a heavier game than that. This is not some light no, I'll do what I want game. you got to think, and it's because you're playing one other person, I need to focus on what they're doing too. If I see them collecting a lot of passengers, maybe I'll pick up one of those passenger scoring cards just so they don't destroy me in endgame scoring. Overall, I really enjoyed it. The art, the train theme, it all, it all kind of comes together. It's, I, I don't want to say the game is whimsical, because it almost has that feeling when I first look at it, it's, it's almost like, ooh, this is a nice quaint game. Now there's more to it than that. And I was pleasantly surprised to enjoy Foothills. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.